7.30 p.m. Um, for a flag salute, by law, no action was taken in closed session. 6A, public comments, recognitions, and reports. Your public comments? Yes, we have two public comment cards pulled this evening. Thank you. Mr. Comstock, Terry Comstock, go ahead and while you're walking up. Really quick, I'm going to read the rules for public comments. It says, please submit a request to speak to the Board of Trustees card located on the exhibit table for any agendized or non-agendized items to the superintendent prior to the meeting. Not more than three minutes are allotted to any one speaker and no more than 20 minutes on the same subject. This portion of the agenda is for comments, recognitions, and reports to the board and is not intended to be a question and answer period. If you have questions for the board, please provide the board president with a written copy and an administrator will provide answers at a later date. Mr. Comstock, can you please state your name? Uh, Terry Comstock. I'm presently the high school girls soccer coach for the last couple of years. Anyway. Um, actually, I've been at Vasquez High School since 2004. I had the pleasure of working with quite a few different athletic directors. Uh, two of them are present in this room. Awesome athletic directors to work for. But the whole purpose that I want to address, and I'm sure Sheldon's going to talk about it as well, uh, thanks for the opportunity first. Uh, we've had some situations this year with the transportation, mainly with the charter buses that we're using at Vasquez. Uh, I think I gave everyone a kind of a quick handout, so I won't sit here and read all of them. I'll let you read them at uh, your leisure. But, it, you know, it's, it's kind of, I'll, I'll skip around to a couple of them, for instance. Um, we took a, showed up for a bus to Ojai one day, boys and girls soccer. Uh, picture 35 kids on a big charter bus. Uh, all of a sudden at uh, Santa Paula, the guy takes a ride, and I'm like, why are you going up to the back way to Ojai on a big charter bus like this? My biggest concern is the safety factor of it. I know a couple of you have driven that road. Uh, it's not conducive at all for a big charter bus of that side. When we got to Ojai, um, it was like, as soon as the doors opened, half the team ran out, girls thrown up on the side and so forth like that. Um, again, another big issue is showing up at the school to go to places and all of a sudden there's no bus. Uh, I've had to drive kids in my own personal vehicle three times now, I guess, and it's a little old. I still have gas receipts if you want it, but, uh, you know, it's, it's just kind of one of those where you never know what's going to show up. The drivers get lost. Uh, I know Tim and I were talking earlier about uh, why do we not use the local charter bus system that we have in that we use for years, but you know, I know cost comes into play and so forth, but um, there's got to be a better way, uh, just something easier, whether it's using district transportation, which which we've used for years, but I understand that there's not enough drivers and so forth, so um, I would think that with the money we pay these buses, this bus company, that there's got to be a way to hire more bus drivers or something. You know. uh, the transportation system of the district has always been reliable, they're very courteous, they're understanding to our needs as uh, teams and so forth. Does that mean I'm about done? So, uh, but it's, it's kind of one of those where, you know, it, I feel more comfortable on a charter bus, yeah, but in all honesty, I think the district is has the better way of providing the transportation. Uh, thanks again for the time. I hope Sheldon talks more about it if he does, but uh, I just wanted to bring that up there by the issues that we're having today. So, thank you.
Good evening, uh, Sheldon Sparks, uh, representative tonight. Um, it's good to see you all. I wasn't here last meeting, so um, just uh, a lot of things transpired, and I just wanted to make some comments on a few of them. First, I'd like to say, Mr. Rosa, thank you for everything that you've done over the last couple of years. Um, you've been fair with Ada. Um, I personally have really appreciated how you worked with us. Um, we still have a job to do, and um, hopefully we can figure something out before we leave. So. Um, Next thing I'd like to talk to is uh, Mr. Mirza, or I'm sorry, Dr. Sahaki. Um, last week, uh, Mr. Fallsgraf complimented you about uh, getting that mental health uh, uh, grant. And I want you to know, I don't know if the community really knows exactly what that is, but you've just affected the mental health of our students for the next five years. And my hat's off to you. Bring it in. My understanding is that so you're bringing in eight employees, not employees, but eight more resources to our three campuses, and so well done, sir. That is a, uh, my hat's off to you, but that, that should be applauded in the community, all right. Um, Coach Terry, no, I never, I know you don't like this, but um, appreciate you, sir. You've been here about 19 years, I do believe. You have over 200 victories, the most winningest coach um, in Vasquez's history. Um, you are a great mentor. You are a great role model for our students, and we are lucky to have you. Um, you could go work at any college, you could go work anywhere you wanted to. And this is the issue where we're using charter buses and we don't have control over the employees. If they just don't show up, oh sorry, we just don't show up. But we have kids and families and coaches and we're not giving them the resources to be successful. And that's kind of what your job is to do, is to give us the tools to make, so we can do our job effectively. And so the way we're doing it right now needs to change, it does. In six months, is that an acceptable time to fix a problem? I don't know. I don't. I do know that this can't keep going forward into next year. And so I hope you find some solutions. I know we've talked about the money. I know we've heard some rumors about buying buses. I know we're having problems hiring drivers. Man, please resolve this problem because we're feeling it all across the district. Our students, our families, and our staff are feeling it. Please fix that problem for us, okay? Um, I hope you know that. Um, we're in negotiations, and, and I appreciate that uh, we're starting now. Um, we had that lady at the beginning of the year who was talking about um, how her, there was a problem at the fifth grade, sixth grade. Um, she was a teacher, but she was a parent in the community. And Mr. Fallsgraf, you asked her, how come you don't work in this district? And she flippantly said, because it's $25,000 more. And I, in my brain, I'll be honest with you, I kind of laughed at that, because that's 2000 a month. And so I didn't think anything of it. And so we opened up negotiations this week, and we started looking at the local districts around us. And oh my goodness, it's true. Okay, we are, me, I'll just use me as an example, I could go to another district and make $25,000 more. And, 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 I, and, I, and I, I'm not here for money. If you don't know me by now, um, I'm here for kids. I'm, I literally am here to serve my community, just like all of them. We, we know that when we come to this district that we are not going to be paid a competitive wage. We know that. But the problem with that is, is that when, we, when teachers get burned out, when teachers get overworked, when teachers get tired, they start looking around and they go, hmm, I can work a whole lot less, make a whole lot more money, and be a lot more happier. And so a lot of our teachers, they don't live in this community. We travel in. I live in Santa Cruz. I know half my staff on Vasquez lives in. And we can't retain the teachers unless we're competitive. And I know you guys can't match what Hart Banks or what Animal Valley, I get that. But you have to address the problem because we're seeing a whole bunch of disruptiveness amongst the union. Okay, I'm so blessed that I'm not a part of negotiations this time because I, I am now above the fray. And I, I, I'm not being worn out during the battle of negotiations and discussion. And so now I'm here to to just present what my union is going through. And so, you know, we look at what the other districts gave. And I hope that numbers mean something to you. I would hope that you would look at Sulphur Springs. Look at Hart. Hart just uh, finished this week. Board hasn't approved it, but look at Hart. Look at how much money that, that, that staff will be getting here next year. And I know you can't give me that. I know you can't get out of that. And I'm not requesting it. But I'm saying if you want to retain teachers, if you want to attract teachers, not the dregs who can't make it north or can't make it south, good teachers, you're going to have to be competitive. Because if we're not, then we're never, we're just going to continue to do what we're doing. Just chasing our tail, being frustrated, 
and watching good teachers walk away. And so I hope that in this negotiation, you hear that Ad is here to partner. And we're, we're, uh, we have a combination uh, argument going on right now. And I've gone to Dr. Sahaki multiple times and said, look, let's just resolve this. Let's figure this out in negotiations, in bargaining, and let's resolve this. Okay, Ada, what we're asking for is peanuts. Where we started to where we're at, we are at peanuts. Look at the numbers. Ask him. Ask them. Ask them. We should resolve this. This creates dissension. This creates bitterness. The teachers look at it and go, what? You're willing to pay? The lawyers have been chasing their tail for the last two weeks about the same topic. How much money have you actually paid your lawyer? I bet you, and I'm not exaggerating, 10, 15 times more than what we're asking. Let's resolve this. Okay, this is not a hard thing to do. We are not greedy. We want to be paid. And so when you throw more work on us and we look at the, at the contract, we say, okay, combination classes. How come we're not getting paid then? And so I hear in my heart, we're not greedy. We're not here trying to stick it to you. We're here to try to survive here. We want to stay here. We want to grow roots here. But when I look north and I look south and I see $25,000 more, my, ring, my ears start to ring. And so I hope you hear us. We continue to give you our best. And I hope that you continue to reward us the best of your ability. Because quite frankly, we are why families come. Teachers. Not you guys. Not Dr. Sohaki. Not fancy programs. The relationships that we create in in our classrooms. And I've had all, no, not all of you, but I've had a lot of your kids in my classroom. I work with you. You know what teachers do. You know what we do. We do relationships. And so if we want to continue to keep those kind of people around, I hope you consider a raise. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys. It's good to see you tonight. So they'll be celebrating by dressing up as 100-year-olds and they have a lot of activities prepared for them. Uh, at High Desert, our, our athletics have been going great. You can see the soccer and the spirit squad and the 100-mile club have been having their practices. Um, at the high school today, we had a game against St. Monica and our guys' soccer team won 4-0. Um, on Saturday, they'll be having a home game at 1. Tomorrow is... Uh, senior night for our girls basketball team and they only have one senior but if you could come and support that would be great and then on the 31st which is a Tuesday the guys soccer team will also be having their senior night for their two seniors anything about negotiations or what's going to happen that have, happens back there but you've been around a couple negotiation cycles and um, uh, not everybody understands it because we have a reserve that doesn't mean that you can just spend away. The minute you trigger deficit spending, um, the county starts looking a little bit deeper. So you have never got as close to deficit, uh, uh, deficit spending. And I know uh, that there are times where things pop up, unfortunate things, um, things that I'd like to think that were, were could have been avoided, but they're just dropped right in your lap and, you know. I wouldn't like to hear your language when you get home, but you've done well managing those things, even those things. Um, in all seriousness, um, the way that you are able, well, again, the superintendent doesn't sit up here and hide behind other staff and, and, and ride your coattails to make himself look good. The last one didn't do that either. So I appreciate it. I come from an environment where the director of finances double barrel with the city council saying, change this number out. What if this happened? What if our TOT collapsed? Blah, blah, blah. I've been able to have those kinds of conversations with you dynamically where you're changing numbers on the board and you can't get any more transparent than that. I, I know that you knew I knew the answers. I, but there's times when, when you really have to be able to tell the public, hey, this is kind of what's going on. And if I'm up here um, making your life hard, at least on, on the level, and you're just that responsive, again, you guys are a great team. And the way you make yourself available dynamically, like right now with numbers, what if this, what if that? It pains me to see you go. It's too bad that there are uh, labor laws and other laws that stop me from doing what I need to do to keep you here. 
How's that for behavior? Anyway, I want to talk about, I went to the lax to meet Los Angeles County School Trustees Association meeting. It was in uh, Palmdale, the Palmdale Learning Center. Um, first thing I want to say about that place in the Palmdale School District is there's, I guess, a Palmdale Promise because it's everywhere you look. I think everybody had a tattoo that said Palmdale Promise. I think my car had a sticker that said Palmdale Promise on it when I left. Uh, there's something to be said about that, and it's about cohesion between the superintendent and the board members. It's about realizing that the superintendent is the educational leader of the community. He's not on the nose ring of the community. The superintendent and the, and the cabinet are hired to be the educational leaders here, and Mr. Mirza, that position ensures that they have the money that they need to be able to do that. This isn't just a cookie cutter thing. We hire an educational leader and a board that understands that you are behind the priorities of the educational leader, which are defined. We already have a strategic plan. The community worked very hard on it. It was Kelly Jensen's version of the Palmdale promise and everybody um, participated. And the one thing I want to call to your attention, maybe people don't realize it, but every time the gold standard report comes up and the superintendent gives a report, there are numbers that are reported on, and those are direct measures of how what the district is doing stacks up against the ex existing strategic plan. That makes it a live document. I see too many buzz phrases coming in where people go to conference, they come back strategic, there's succession planning that, they hire some consultant and the celebrations at the end when you get a book that thick listing all the board members with their names and everybody else's name and it sits on a shelf and becomes a dead document. The best boards, even at the state level, decide what's really important. There's consensus and focus on what the superintendent's educational goals are. If those are poor, you find a new superintendent. They're hard to find nowadays. When you've got people bringing in money, millions of dollars, to replace a $4 million sudden overnight deficit of charter funding, I don't call that bad leadership. When you see, okay, Brianna, it's your time. I haven't tore into you yet, so I'm about to. Last time you heard President Taxoni, it's President Taxoni. She is the spokesperson for the board, not me, not anyone over there. Next year, whoever, you'll all have your chance. But at this time, President Taxoni has put some things out there that are her priorities. The first ones were kind of hallmarky, but I like them. But there was one in there that made a lot of sense to me, and it was about health, mental health. I've seen for way too long a stigma that goes with us having a problem because you're having a bad day, You've got social economic issues, you're a sped kid, you're not learning, uh, you're ostracized, you're, you're out on the fringe of things, and you just can't catch a break. And then finally, you do something stupid or you hurt yourself, and, and, and a 5150 call seems to be the first step people take, and that is changing very rapidly. So um, what I liked about your um, priority or, or your initiative was that you're smart enough to look at what your superintendent's goal is and to time your initiative at a time where these people have gotten the funding to make it real. Um, the measurability of it is kind of scary for me because student records are sensitive, at least most of us know that. Um, but the fact that you are lining up your initiatives as a president with the realities of the budget, I congratulate you on that. I would suggest that everyone on this board take a look at your president's priorities and ask yourself what you can do to support those priorities. Your day is coming up here, and I suspect that when, you're, when your day comes, you will have priorities that are important to you, and if they line up with the state superintendent, the county office of education superintendent, and your own superintendent, you will have a winner. These people have brought a hundred kids back just this year. Uh, it's unfortunate that somewhere a hundred kids were lost. 
put in my wallet, that's $1.1 million stacked on the other $1.5 million that's coming in every year. You're doing a fantastic job. Cohesive boards produce successful superintendents. If your superintendent's evaluation is poor, that means you suck as a board, bottom line. I want to talk a little bit, I'm almost done, about the school safety plan presentation. I was kind of watching what was going on. You've got different school boards at tables, and some of them seemed to be like very much in tune, and they were talking about staff. There were breakout sessions I was floating around. Oh, by the way, we heard from uh, Sergeant Schaefer, who I think some of us know in town. Um, he, he, he and his team have that to do. They also have something to do with all these illegal drug houses that are popping up that that team is running out of here. I congratulated him and, and suggested he pass on our best wishes as a school board to his team that is taking our streets back very close to Meadowlark School. Anyway, my contribution to this um, discussion we had was I think it's really important if you expect teachers to be the front line on protecting their students, I think it's a good idea if the teachers feel that they are part of what's being protected. Mm. So um, the last time I went to the high school, there's film up. You can't, they can see who's out there. They can see the threat. Um, I don't care who you are. If you sit up here, everybody knows who I am. I got a target on my car. I'm easy to spot. But when I go to the high school or any school, it's my job to, to, to put my card up for the Raptor system. You have to model the behavior expect. The Sheriff's Department said in that meeting over there, the Raptor system has been a big deal because people show up working for contractors and things that do not belong anywhere around kids. So encourage, uh, if you are a community member, you go there every day. If you're an employee, you have a pass. But if you visit a school site, insist that and make it easy for staff to be protected. Um, at the end of the day, um, something I am happy to see tonight on the agenda, and I'll have comments, is this idea that we're going to understand better for the sake of the board and the community what the business services department is. Um, I also think it's a good idea that we know our share of, other than making the call the final when we really need them. And I remember there was a program through the PTSO called Know Your District several years ago. And that program consisted of bringing different uh, entities of our organization and community organizations such as public safety and making those people available to tell the public and the parents and the staff who they are, what they do, what their organizational structure looks like, what their budget is, what their operational constraints are. So I would very much like to see this program that you're talking about tonight go into other areas up to and including the public safety of, of people that appeared at the Know Your District thing. That was a very successful program. It mimics a program where I work and, and several other forward communities. So um, it's terrible that you will not be sitting there. I'm not, I kind of, I kind of did myself poorly on the last PARS report, so I can't pull you out to vote no, but know that I would. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to start my board comments um, with sending my condolences to the family of Mr. Jim Duzik. Um, Mr. Duzik was a past board member. Um, he was a local realtor as well as a very involved community member for years and years from the time that I was a little girl, I remember him. Um, Mr. Duzik passed away last Sunday after a long, um, hard-fought battle with ALS. I remember Mr. Duzik as just being a very kind, calm, compassionate, highly intelligent man. He always had this little grin on his face, always, every, like when I picture him, I just picture his his little grin. He wasn't. Um, he wasn't out getting attention. He wasn't a very loud man, but you knew. You knew when he was there. He was a very. Um, he was an awesome presence to be around. Um, Jim's family 
We'll be holding a graveside service at Acton Cemetery on Monday, the 30th at 1, with a celebration of life to follow. In lieu of flowers, Ms. Duzik would like any donations to go to teamgleason.org, an organization with a mis mission to empower people with ALS to live purposeful lives. Um, so I'm going to ask that everybody please keep Jim's wife, Geraldine, and his kids, Brandon, Charlene, and Caroline, and the entire Duzik family in your thoughts and prayers. Um, <clears throat> next, handbells. I recently joined the adult handbells program. <laughs> I met, we've, we've met twice. Um, I'm having an absolute blast. Um, so I want to thank Mr. Roland, and he would kill me if I call him Mr. Roland. So I want to thank Larry. Um, and the entire Handbells family for welcoming me into um, Handbells. And I want to thank everybody, including Mrs. Van Ornum, who has to stand next to me, <laughs> um, for having an incredible amount of patience with my outstanding musical ability. <laughs> um, we're having a lot of fun. So if you guys haven't been a part of Handbells or seen Handbells or anything, it's, it's really a blast. Thank you, Emily. Have a um, I'm definitely looking forward to the girls' basketball game with their senior night tomorrow night. I'm really, really hoping to get some soccer games. Um, I, I hear all the time how much we're missing out. I, um, I definitely need to get out there, and I'm looking forward to the 100th day of school celebration at Metal Arc on February 7th. So thank you to Ms. Moynihan for the invite to that. Um, Mr. Asan, I was on the interview panel when you interviewed me for your position. Um, that was back when I was an actual employee. Board members don't go on interviews. Um, but I was an actual employee. I was the president of CSEA at the time. Um, and I knew then that you were going to bring something special to our district. Um, I could tell in your interview, and it was over Zoom, so it was awkward interview times. Um, but I could tell in that interview that you were um, you were special, and I knew that you weren't gonna we weren't gonna have you long. I I, I knew that you were going to um, follow some big dreams, and I too dream of living at the beach. So congratulations! Um, thank you for your contributions to our district, and good luck in your new district. We're definitely lucky to have you. And that's all from my board comments. Um, item 9A, approval of consent calendar items, which includes B, the minutes of the regular board meeting from January 12th, and C, the warrant register. Can I get that moved in? Paul Scott moved. Lester second. Do we have any discussion or changes to the warrant register? Hearing none. All those in favor? Jim Jorgensen, Costa Nike, Masco, and I. Balls you out by. Brianna Texoni, I. The consent agenda is approved by a vote 5 0. 10, a personnel action report. Can I get a move? I will move. I will second. Discussion? Hearing none, call for question. All those in favor? Jordan, so I'm Costa and I. Falls you out by. Brianna Texoni, I. The personnel action report is approved by a vote of 5 0. 11A, Corey Engineering and Testing Incorporated proposes solar array installation in Acton Campus, Metal Art Vasquez High School, and High Desert School. Can we get a motion? Falls you out, move. Mask on, second. Discussion? Oh, Sorry. That's okay. Um, I'll defer to our assistant superintendent of business services, but as part of the solar panel project, um, a engineering and testing of, of the soil of the sites, including the district office, is a prerequisite. And with that, there is three contracts that are being presented by Corey Engineering and Testing for approval this evening by the board. I'm not sure if Mr. Mirza has any additional comments. No. 
I think uh, Dr. Sahaki said it. Uh, so, so they're going to be, this is not for the installation, but they'll be uh, making sure all of our like metal arrays that are being uh, brought to be installed are meet code and regulations. And we're also doing the inspecting of all of our material. And this is a requirement from, to, to, to have the solar installed. And so the, these, uh, this company is uh, contracted out uh, through luminance. And so since there is some conflict of interest why they couldn't pay them directly. So this is a one-time payout from the district and we're gonna take the invoice and uh, rebuild it back to luminance to get reimbursed because we shouldn't be paying any out-of-pocket costs for it. declared that fire panel is out of date and the fire alarm system there is out of date. So the discussions right now are to move those uh, solar panels out of the active elementary school to add them to Vasquez um, solar panels. And since Vas and why Vasquez and not you know split up the solar panels equally, we asked uh, the contractors, our solar company that is because Vasquez is still in DSA approval Whereas these other two, uh, or the other three sites, including the district offices, they're ready to start construction uh, sometime at the end of this uh, month. Uh, so it would just push back the timeline a lot more if they tried to split up the panels equally across all the sites. So the easiest way to do it was to add the panels to Vasquez, and that would allow for those panels to be distributed there. Are they going to be expanding in the footprint where they are but behind the scoreboard, or are they going to be used in a different location? It'll be the same. Just going to make it a larger footprint up there because we have available space there. Yes. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. Just curious, when we are expanding Vasquez, uh, will it be a case where there's possible overgeneration and we may not recoup the uh, the same amount of savings? Not, not according to um, the projections made by the solar company. But that is a possibility because they're just projections. <laughs> okay. And just curious about the timeline on being reimbursed. Well, as soon as uh, we get the contract approved here, uh, we've received the invoices already. So it's just a matter of us cutting the check and scanning over the copy to the company. And so we should see a reimbursement within, hopefully by the end of this month or beginning of the next month. Okay, thank you. Um, just for public awareness and context, this solar panel project predates me being on the board, so the decision was made six years ago. The last time it was discussed, Someone unmentioned in the audience had to remind me that I was actually on the board when this happened and how I, I voted. So this is an old deal. Um, I think the, the most important takeaway is that Akron School is still not DSA approved. Um, that's this place. And um, when I'm looking for floor space next year when more kids are coming back, store that one. You can escape that with the rest of them can. Um, I think it's good that the company that's putting the bank isn't hiring their own engineering, so we can just kind of ignore that earthquake fault that is over there and put it wherever we want to save a few bucks. Um, so this is just keeping everybody clean. And before they um, get the job start, you can probably force them to pay uh, this bill. Okay, so we're relatively sure they'll reimburse us. Um, I don't recall there being a huge outlay for this, these solar panels for the district to put them up. I don't recall there was cash involved where the district had to pay. So the over generations part of getting stuff for free. So if somebody gives me a free car, I don't ask them to put gas in it later, right? Okay. I don't have any questions. Um, call for question all order in favor? Tim Jordan, Austin, I. Vasco, I. Vols, you have I. 
Brianna text on the I pass with a vote five zero. 11B, agreement with SPSG Incorporated for consulting services to implement the mental health services professional demonstration grant. Dr. Sahakian. Thank you. So the mental health demonstration professional move. Yes. I'm so sorry. Ken moves. Thank you. The mental health demonstration professional grant requires grant evaluation to be conducted, and SBSG is the consult consulting services for that uh, for the grant evaluation. So they provide the grant evaluator. Um, the funding comes directly out of the mental health demonstration uh, grant of three point five million over five years. So there's no funding encumbrance of general funds of the district. Thank you. Um, discussion. And that their task is to make sure the money is spent where it's supposed to be spent in the right place. That's right. And that's kind of like a watchdog to make sure that it's done right. Correct. That we are maintaining the scope of work as presented in the RFP right. that we call cool. for a proposal. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor? Kim Jorgensen. Costa and I. Masco and I. Balls, you have aye. Brianna Tech's on aye. Um, Passes with a vote five zero. Eleven C professional services agreement with Efficiency Incorporated. Can I get a motion? Um, second. Thank you. Again, with the mental demonstration grant, there's a requirement that we collect data, confidential data, on how we're doing in terms of meeting the goals of the grant. Um, there are three uh, reports annually to be submitted by my office to the U.S. Department of Education. Efficiency Incorporated keeps uh, confidential data so that we can report back to the U.S. Department of Education. And the funding for this agreement comes directly from the grant and no encumbrance of district funds. Discussion? Um, you referenced goals, annual goals for the use of the money. Are those presented to the board? Yes. So there'll be annual reports based so on the goals. So fight over is probably not a good deal, maybe. Should we so if we're, ahead of, if we're ahead of the game, or we actually know what the superintendent wants to do, and don't fight you ad nauseum, that's probably what's good to the auditor, maybe. Oh, I would think so. Uh, I, yeah. I, I, so that's all I have. I don't have anything. Off question. All those in favor? Tim Jorgensen. Also, no. Also, I'm fine. Balls, you have aye. Brianna Tex, only aye. That's a vote 5 0. 11D, business services overview. Thank you. Recently, we had our trustees request uh, from a couple of departments from the district office, one being business and the other HR. HL, HR, Human Resources, will be presenting their practices and hiring practices and the oversight of uh, personnel at the February meeting coming up. But tonight we have business services, um, and we have Mr. Mirza presenting here for the last time, an overview of business services to our trustees and our community. Mr. Mirza. Good evening, board members. So, yeah, like Dr. Sahaki mentioned, um, we will be go, going over the business services overview. So this is, we'll start off with the org chart. So this position reports directly to the superintendent, but then we have several uh, layers to this position. As you can see, uh, the director of charter, uh, this position has direct oversight of, which oversees 11, 12 different charter schools. Uh, our charter director kind of oversees the MOUs and uh, the outlook of the development of uh, relationships with the charters where this uh, desk actually does the fiscal oversight. We review all of their 11, 12 budgets that they send. Every single report that we have to do, uh, they also have to do. And so we serve as their county oversight, like LACO serves our oversight. And so we have to do the same due diligence and look into their facilities and all their fiscal matters. Uh, we move forward, the school nurse, um, this position is also responsible for, as you guys know, with you know, regular nurse duty guard and maintain all the vaccinations, take care of all the health and welfare of our uh, students out there. Obviously, Nurse Carey is one man show, and um, that's quite a bit for the entire district. Um, food coordinator services, um, 
what can I say, Sean Mishishim, that you reach the point where that we do have to make sure you're in program compliance, you have state and federal program guidelines you have to abide by, you have to also at the same time file your state uh, and federal reimbursement meal application is a yearly process that uh, is really important to the school district because the meal applications actually, uh, the more we collect, um, if we get to a certain percentage level, uh, it brings in additional revenue for the district upwards up to like two million dollars so it's, and that magic number is 55 percent currently our food services uh, director has got it up to 63 percent so that's quite a bit of a uh, accomplishment um, underneath food, after food services you have MNO um, and we'll get into the details of MNO then on top of that you have an actual business department which is payroll, accounts payable, and then our IT department as well. And then outside of food services, as you can see, the food services director has all the utility workers, the cashier, and the transportation because it's actually coordinator of food service and transportation. All the bus drivers, mechanics fall under uh, that department. And let's go to the next slide. This is just a sample budget calendar. Um, barely see it, but there's some. This kind of highlights all the main deadline and reporting periods that uh, the business office does. So the first annual report was due December. Um, then you have the you know, LCAP review meetings. You have uh, May revise. You have the LCAP budget changes. So it kind of gives you an outline of when our our whole year of clients and when are things due and what are we doing during those particular months. We're not, we're not seeing, you know, revenue coming in or do you want to add additional compensation increases? Do you want to add new programs such as the Makerspace, Career Tech Labs, or, you know, are there identified LCAP costs, which is our local control plan that we can ship money to. So it's kind of like balancing act and figuring out where, um, and so no one year is the same as the other, where one year you may focus on additional compensation, the other year you may want to go through program development or move somewhere in the middle. So going right into it, we have one payroll staff, you know, um, for the entire district. Um, we have um, responsible for making sure we're in compliance with all federal state laws, uh, payroll processing, you have to make sure you're classifying everybody correctly, certificated, classified, you're dealing with stirs and purrs, um, making sure you're doing all the salary computations correctly. Those are just some of the samples of the salary computation, normal, retro, deferred pays, late hires, termination adjustments, uh, making sure everybody's retirements are up to date. You also have wage and tax reporting, W-2s, any payroll reconciliation, and on top of that, that position manages our benefit plan, which is with uh, CDT. Going forward to maintenance operations, they're, they have a huge job. and had some stop during us tomorrow because um, there's all types. Anything can happen. Anything can break down. Um, it really depends what's happening in the operations as of that day. So currently, Ernesto is you know, working with our architects with the solar project and also with uh, the high desert field that we're trying to work on. Any type of risk management, custodial grounds, you name it, uh, security, uh, inventory management, um, property liability, <laughs> it's all falls under warehouse, or sorry, uh, maintenance operations. Uh, quick overview, like you said, responsibilities, building systems, HVAC, plumbing, electrical, carpentry, roofing, those guys are, they're busy. They're busy and they do a lot of work. Um, next slide, please. Charter school, we kind of recently touched on. Uh, we have Shay, which is our charter, charter director. She works with me directly to work with our charter partners, which is about 12 charters that we have to kind of go over all of their MOUs, make sure that they're preparing their financial reports and their fiscally solvent. Next, uh, technology. Two staff members that take care of technology for the entire district. Uh, you have uh, Caesar and Alex, which are constantly busy. Um, I kind of put a picture up here because they do a lot of the background work that people don't see, you know, making sure all the teacher laptops are up to date, all of our servers, 
everything. Uh, communication, not only that, so they work with E-Ray to try to uh, rebuild our infrastructure, uh, making sure our internet speeds up to running, and also copiers, printers, and troubleshoot, everything that makes this place go well and makes our lives easier at work. Uh, transportation, uh, heard a lot about tonight, I know it's, a, it's been an ongoing problem. Um, just some of the responsibilities, dispatching, uh, we have the routing and scheduling. We've shifted over to a, a online, like a, not a manual system of keeping track of routes, so a digital version, and so there's some training involved in that. You have, you know, two-way radio talking, emergency procedures, accidents, field trip booking and billing. We don't have a van yet, <laughs> um, but next, we have VMV poll notices, we're doing uh, certifications, um, making sure the drivers are up to date with their with all of their licensing. Uh, currently, we have three new drivers that we've hired. One uh, should be cleared by the end of this month. They'll be actually part of the driving team. And the other two are still working on getting the certifications and uh, testing done with our CHP. So they have a little bit of time with, with those additional drivers, uh, transportation should be okay. That's three additional drivers that we'll be adding to the staff. Um, so everything with transportation, ordering buses, mechanic certification, CHP inspection, you're dealing with the CHP audit here, uh, purchasing tires, replacement, applying for grants, all of that falls under uh, transportation, food service. We touched on, you have obviously your employee management, filing bank deposits, claim, state and federal revenue, uh, yearly program audits, training for staff, ordering equipment supplies, grant application, no applications, accounts payable, and purchasing is one position here, and uh, it's quite a bit responsible. We're not going to read every single thing, but uh, processing all payment, billing invoices, um, special ed invoices, excess costs, weekly warrant registers, all W-9s, 1099s. Um, this, uh, this position is really busy, um, and it's in constant communication with the school sites as well, and trying to help them train and get the new secretaries up to speed on the processes and the checks and balances. So um, end of year closing, on top of that, you're reconciling all your outstanding POs, um, going over, you know, working with LACO, to make sure they have all the backup needed, that once the PO is approved, she's working with the LACO side to make sure that a lot of times they ask for, they ask for board meeting minutes and board backup to uh, make sure that they cut the check and send it to us. So contracts is another area we don't have a specific position for, but we kind of, I kind of oversee this along with um, any interaction that I have with the department that I'm working with that needs that specific type of contract. And we also have attorneys that we reach out to. So these are just some of the specific types of contracts we deal with. Obviously, our CBA collective bargaining agreements, uh, charter MOUs, uh, any settlements, any consultants, their legal um, maintenance agreements. And so primary considerations for a contract requires uh, two parties, both with the ability and authority to contract, offer acceptance and consideration for each. Authority to enter contracts is obviously the board must approve and ratify all the contracts. Agenda items must be submitted in advance and backup must be included. Obviously, the board can delegate the authority to either the superintendent or the signee to um, you know, enter into a contract. And the scope could be determined, like how much can the superintendent approve before you submit the board. But either way, Say the superintendent or I get in for a contract, we still have to bring it to the board for you guys to approve either way. And so if the contract is not approved or ratified by the board, it may get void, could mess up our relations with our vendors that we deal with, um, and the contractor may not get paid. And then the actual employee that entered into that contract without proper authority may be uh, personally liable as well. Um, so there's Several different types of contracts. Um, you have business, construction related contracts, uh, contracts for construction and professional services. And they each have their individual guidelines as far as when you go out for bidding, the bidding limits. And um, we're not going to go into every 
single thing, but here's some ideas what professional services are, architectural, landscape, uh, surveying. Uh, next slide, Alex. For professional services, there's no bid threshold. Selection must be based on demonstrated competence. Um, Special services are accounting services, uh, legal services, insurance services. Uh, there is no bid or competition uh, required. Um, pretty much they can be selected if they're specially trained to perform those services. Then you have construction group services, which is erection, alteration, renovation, improvement, demolition, repair work involving any publicly owned or operated facility. Um, Construction services, we have the bid threshold of 15000 um, If you're a Kupka district, that automatically raises your uh, bid to 60000 for informal and 200000 for formal. We are not a Kupka district. Uh, next slide. Purchase of equipment and material supplies. You have to really pay close attention to LACO bulletins because this is increasing every uh, year. So currently the bid limit uh, competitive bid limit increases to 109,000. So if it exceeds that, then you have to go through the formal bidding process. Next slide. Uh, the next couple of slides are just kind of an outline and a guide of what you guys could have for reference. It kind of tells you what type of contract, if bidding is required, and applicable uh, with public law and contract code. So we're not going to get into, you guys can use that. It's just a reference tool. And so. With that, uh, the questions? First, I think it's uh, compliments to you and your staff to put this together and that we have uh, enjoyed compliance with this organization that we haven't had any real disputes or problems or issues other than the people who provide the lights, but we've got that under control. Uh, I notice on the one program of transportation, there's vans are on you say we don't have any vans now. Is uh, that something that's in the future or what? Um, we've had discussions of you know, purchasing mm -hmm. vans specifically for transportation. Or to help out with transportation on select services, primarily athletics and small venues. In the past, last year, you guys approved a bus that we're still waiting for, and uh, we hope to have it hopefully by this summer. So we don't want to allocate any additional funds for a van until, because we have money tied up in that bus right now. But right. yes, it's definitely a viable option for you. But that's something that I see it here, which I'd like to see in the word there, so somebody can come back and say, maybe we need to look at either lease or whatever. We don't have to buy them, but seasonal lease them when we need them yeah. and have the appropriate people trained in the appropriate desk. You know, that they can do that to help facilitate some of these transportation issues. Again, uh, good work, I so appreciate it. Thanks. Field trip booking and billing would be the same category that we have our uh, charters for our sports. So yes, we get the that this particular department uh, deals with booking and billing all the field trips. We get the information from the athletic director and sometimes the principals over to us, and then you know it, obviously based on the collective bargaining agreement, we have to ask my bus drivers first, you know, uh, by seniority. Uh, who's willing to take those extra routes, but we can't force them. If they say no, then you have to go to the charter route. We always ask our internal employees first. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for putting that together. It was uh, very informative, and uh, I don't have any questions on it. Thank you. Thank you. Osan, I am going to. Um, ask you if if um, you can try to tell me how many full-time equivalent positions you have running your entire operation you're responsible for the services we have about nine <laughs> nine right one two three four five six Seven, yeah, about nine, ten. So, <laughs> so you have <laughs> yeah. So you have nine people. Does that include you? Include managing and oversight. Then you have your all the people. You know, twenty, twenty-five. 
Yeah. Everybody, bus drivers included, are talking in the food service okay, people. So let's just talk about the administration team, the people are in the office working as management analysts or clerks or but actually nine. doing the compliance work. But nine. So you're talking about the budget team. There's no team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just two <laughs> There's a fine <laughs> Look, I know the budget, I know his bid limit is, it's on my keychain. Remember when I went last week, and yeah, I know what it is. I've been here a while. So you have, you have the budget team, you have the charter team, you have the transportation, this is all administration. You have the HR team, you have the, the maintenance management team. Yeah, HR is a separate department, you know. Okay, so that's not in the nine. That's not in. Well, that must be the part that they're talking about being top heavy all the time, right? So, does LACO not require that there's a fractional balance between the administrative team and the teaching staff and the support staff? So, yeah, there is a report on, on CDE called uh, a teacher to admin ratio. And so, that report is annually due to our. Uh, Independent auditor. We don't submit it to CD, but we submit it to our independent auditor. That so uh, Christy Smith would have Christy find if there, there were and access. They, and they look at all of the administrators that we employ across the district and look at our teacher ratio and to see if we are over or under. And if we are over the ratio, which is a, a small calculation that you enter in and it gives the spits out a number, and if you're above or below, um, a specific ratio, there's a penalty based on your state funding, and we not, we're not over it. Well, I remember the days when there were those penalties of early on when I was out there. So, in other words, they will actually withhold funding because you had top heaviness in the district office versus out in the field. Yeah, your audit, on your annual audit report, if, there, if we were not in compliance, they would report that, and then it would be a fiscal finding, and they would automatically make the audit adjustment and take the money. That's real good for kids, isn't it? Um, <laughs> so, so the IT team, I'm going to pick on the IT team now. Uh, I, I, I went to school in Oklahoma, so I'm really good with math. Um, if he sits there for three hours, that's three hours of staff time, right? And then he has to set up, he has to tear down, he has to take all my offensive conduct and language out of the video, which ruins it, by the way. Does all that, edits it, uploads it. In my world, he's got five hours into every board meeting. He's a hard liquor. <laughs> well, if you hear what I'm saying, out of 40 hours, five hours is a better part of one day every two weeks. So when I hear people saying that the district office is overstaffed, um, no. And, and something else I want to call your attention is you get into bigger districts, do you have a set of di different set of compliances that they cut you slack because you're small versus Long Beach Unified or no. ABC school district, which no. is... No, you have to be the same. Arcadia, Cerritos, and... Bellflower, I think. Anyway, you have to do the exact same thing. Yeah. So, your charter team, how many people? <laughs> right? <laughs> we got one person. Do you have any idea how, how at the LACO office of the charters they oversee, how many people they have on that team besides the whole fourth floor? Not more than one. <laughs> and you don't make no money off those charters. I've talked about that enough. That that scares me. Um, so again, I think this is very healthy. I think that if people were available to understand what you all are responsible for, all of it is under compliance. Everybody's looking. There's a report to file. I think if people knew that and spent some time around here not walking through your influence and staff and giving directives that you should be talking to the superintendent about, but just like a regular visit, you know, and come in and see what's actually going on here. 
they might realize there's a lot of work happening. I would hope that at some point you carry on with with your ambassador program when the timing is right and you actually have residents uh, and parents and constituents come in and go through a training program so people actually know their district, know what's happening, get rid of the whatever it is and the silliness and just go, okay, we can trust the people we have. We know what they do. They do this. I'm familiar with that. So when it comes time to serve on, on a site council, safety council, to be a, a, a great parent representative, to be a liaison to the district and to finally sit up here, you can fast forward you on how you've managed your division is sad that we're going to lose you. Um, this is a very detailed report, so thank you very much um, for putting this together. Will this information be available anywhere except just this board meeting video? Yes, besides, besides the attachment to the agenda item for tonight, um, we're going to go ahead and expand the um, links to different departments, and so we're going to go ahead and upload this to business services. And I do appreciate Mr. Mears' um, effort with the presentation. Granted, um, he, he, he provided a snapshot in, in terms of you know, the most important key points, but it's a very thorough presentation for anybody within the community to see you know, what goes into procurement, contracts, payroll, uh, accounts payable just for the sake of transparency and the depth and detail that your department works um, on. And, and it's, it's a team of three, remember, team of three. Um, that's all I have, thank you. Thank you. 11E resolution 2022-23.07 uh, authorizing use of remote teleconferencing provisions. Can I get a motion? Oh. Second. Discussion? Good. All in favor? Tim Jorgens and I. Costa and I. Masco and I. Ball draft I. Grant attacks on the I. Passes with a vote 5 0. 12 A calendar. We have two items on our calendar regular board meeting February 9, 2023, and February 23rd, 2023. Anything to add? No. Okay. Um, 13A future agenda agenda items. We have governance training, masters in governance, and Brown Act workshop, and HR people and Ed Services Department overview. 14A agenda. Sorry. Discussion. Kim, you got your name? No. I'd like to. I'd like to see us do a. Uh, boilerplate contract agreements or different types of agreements that we have. Uh, most of the contracts that we're signing are vendor contracts and they should live within our, our own boilerplate agreement. So I'd like to see us develop some boilerplate for our most common contracts. Anybody want to second that? I'll second that. Um, can we get a vote to add Lester's request for contracts to our future agenda items, too? Tim Jordan, sorry. Costa and I. Last call. Well, you have I. Brianna Tex on the I. I have one. I would like to uh, see an informational update about the charter busing contract, the terms of the contract to include an appearance by the um, sales representative of that of that company. Awesome. Um, I would like to see that happen within a month. Uh, it, in two weeks, it's a superintendent's determination that things have changed enough not to bring these people in here and face my questioning, then so be it. I will second that. All those in favor? To the door, to the cost of night. Matt's going right. Follow your up. Aye. Brianna, text on the aye. Um, I don't have anything to add. Okay, to move on now. Um, 14A adjournment um, recommended the board adjourn the meeting at. So moved. 
859, motion 10. I'll second. All those in favor? 10 to Aye. Well, you have aye. Brianna Tanksoni, aye. Meeting adjourned at 8.59 p.m. That was 8.59 p.m. <laughs>